What's up and welcome back to another episode of Action Takers. Now, today we have a very special show for you today because I have Miss Donisha Winters on the show. Round of applause. Round of applause. Why? Because she is the founder and owner of The Don Management. She has an MBA. She's a brand expert, digital public relations specialist. Not only that, she's a member of Forbes The Culture. That's a lot of accolades. One more round of applause, please. Now, on this show, we go deep on everything. If you've been looking to build a business, if you've been looking to build a brand, hell, if you've been looking to start something that leaves a legacy behind and create a future where you're in control, you need to be watching this episode. So do not forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you get alerted on all the new interviews and content from this channel. And I will see you inside. Uh, here we go. All right, so welcome again to Action Takers, where we are interviewing people who are creating a future where they are in control. And I do this so you can learn the mindsets from people who've actually done it and you can apply it to your own success. Now today, I'm so excited. I'm really excited today because I've got, she's an MBA. She's got an MBA. She's a brand management expert, a digital public relations specialist, a member of Forbes, the culture. That's huge. The CEO of the, the Don, MGMT. She she manages artists, athletes, brands, and creatives. And I'm so excited to have her here today, Miss Donisha Winners. Now, did I say your name right, first and foremost? Yes, that okay. is right. Uh, my name is Denisha, but actually, all my friends call me Don. So, can I call you Don? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure you'd be like, no, don't call me. You don't know me like that. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. You definitely okay. Call. Yeah. So, uh, I'm glad to have you on here, Don, because um. I think it's important that people hear from entrepreneurs from all different backgrounds and you got a unique background. Um, we're going to get into it. But first, while we're getting started, just tell us a little bit about how you got started and your story, your back, your backstory. OK, so my background story is I'm from Houston. I'm 27 years old. Um, I received my BBA in management from the University of Texas at San Antonio, and I received my MBA from Texas Southern University. Um, mm -hmm. yes. I'm from PV. I'm from PV, so, you know. Oh, <laughs> that's bad news. That's yeah. bad news. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, I'm basically in the entertainment and media industry, and I started working in that industry in 2014, where I worked at a radio station, and I was doing promotions, assistant, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, I started just doing like a lot of like free internships to kind of like, you know, build up my experience and things of that sort. Um, after receiving my MBA, I got into this internship program called HBCUs in LA, mm -hmm. where they take you to LA. Um, it's free housing. It's a paid internship. They pair you up with a really great brand in the entertainment industry. And that's when stuff really just kind of kicked off for me because I was working for this PR firm in Hollywood and um, they ended up hiring me about a month into interning. Mm -hmm. And I ended up being the assistant to the CEO and founder yeah. of that PR firm. And it was pretty cool because um, her clients were like Serena Williams, Janelle Monae. Yeah. Ben yeah. 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 So that was pretty Big exciting. Time. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty, it was pretty cool. And in the midst of all of that, I've always wanted to be in entertainment and media and, but I've always wanted to be like on the business side behind it. Yeah. So, you know, being in LA kind of just really pushed me to like really, really start it. So in 2018, um, that's when I started the Dawn management. I started while I was out in LA mm -hmm. and like you said, um, I manage artists, brands, athletes, um, influencers, and then there's a digital marketing aspect to it too, where I do websites, social media management, brand management, um, and things of that sort. So, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, yeah, that's, a, I mean, like I say, that's huge. That backstory is huge. And like I said, um, we're going to get into a lot of stuff. So, yeah, like you said, um, you worked in public relations. Um, what's it mm -hmm. called? ID Public Relations, correct? That's what the company It's. It was, well, the first, my first start in PR, I worked for, it was called Image PR Boutique, okay. but when I was in Hollywood, it's called ID yeah. Public Relations, like 
their identification, like ID tokens. And you've also yeah. worked at like TNT, mm-hmm. TBS, stuff like that. So, you know, like you've done some big stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like I, said, I can't believe I, I can't believe you didn't mention that. Yeah, though, like. I swear I was. yeah, but that's I forgot. But that mean that means I worked at. Yeah, no, that means you've done a lot, though. If, I, you, um, if you can forget you worked there, that means yeah. you, you've done some big time stuff. No, that's crazy. I didn't stay that long because it was so crazy. Because after I worked at ID, I worked there for some time. I was yeah. in their PR department, but my business was picking up. Yeah, and I'm from Houston, and the majority of my clients was in Houston. I quit that job and moved back to Houston. Yeah, so it was kind of like short lived. It was a great experience, yeah. but I kept my business more than anything. So yeah. I had came back. Um, really focus on one of my artists. Yeah. All right. So, um, okay. So let's talk. Let's let's get into it. Let's get into that mindset, right? So you're the okay. oldest of five, correct? Yes. You're the oldest of five. And one thing I remember you, you you were talking about. You were saying that um you couldn't really look for anybody to give you support or to depend on. So do you yes. think that you were kind of born with that mindset, or is that something that you've had to cultivate in order to get to that level where you feel like, hey, I'm a grind. I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna build something for myself. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's hard to say if I was kind of born or if I cultivated it. I think the thing with me is that I looked at my environment and situations around me and just knew that I didn't want to be in those situations. Mm-hmm. So that just was like a natural clicker for me. It was like, you know, I don't have nobody to look up to. Can't nobody really tell me what to do. I know I have to figure this out on my own, but I know I want to be successful. Yeah. Because what was so crazy was I was telling people like, even though my parents, whatever, like didn't graduate high school, whatever the case may be, they made sure that I went to really good schools and was like in good environment. So I was inspired by my environments, but also knew like at home, you know, that's kind of maybe not like the life I wanted to live. Yeah. So it was kind of like that too. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just always had this thing where it's just like, I just knew I had to be successful, like mm-hmm. whatever it took. And it's hard to say if I was like born with it or, just so what do you think it is though that stops people from just switching gears like that because a lot of people have had similar situations like you but they just crumble under the pressure so what do you think causes people to just crumble like that i think like you said it's all mindset and hey it's so crazy because it's like to me i don't know if mindset could even just be taught i think it's like you say it's something that you're born with or it's something that just like mm-hmm. naturally comes to you but it's like me, I'll take my situations and use them as motivation. Yeah. People look at their hardships and let it affect them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just all mindset and your mental health and yeah. your, your mentality. Um, I feel like what makes people crumble is just like the fear of failure. Yeah. A lot of times, um, you know, if you're used to failure, if failure is around you, you know, you're like, well, what can make me successful? Like what makes me, you know, the one. Yeah that could, you know, do all these things that maybe the people in my family couldn't do. Yeah. So I think it's that too, but you have to have a lot of confidence in yourself. Yeah. And because can't nobody believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Yeah. So. Interesting thing. Are you a reader at all? I am. Oh, I well, try to read a book every month. Well, let me say this. Let me say this before we get started. Um, before I say what I was about to say. Do you, so you, do you read audio books, everything? I don't really, I like to actually read. What about ebooks though? Like the ebooks. I mean, yeah. So I, yeah, you should I mean, check out Scribed, right? I think I've, I've, I've mentioned this thing so much that um, I should become an ambassador for them. But basically anybody who loves to read, I recommend Scribe because they give you unlimited books for $10 a month. When I say unlimited, like you can download some of the greatest books of all time on this app for $10 a month. And like I said, I don't, I don't have a link to send you or anything like that. It's just, I'm yeah. just dropping that because you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm like, go read. But uh, what I was about to say was that um, I read uh, the book Mastery. They were talking about this. And I think this is um, something that reconciled it for me. They were saying that everybody could do, but some people just have a genetic inclination to do. You get what I'm saying? Like, you could be good at a sport, but for some reason you were just born like, I'm going to dedicate my time to this sport. And sometimes I believe that that's what it is for entrepreneurship because I've argued with people all day like oh okay i think people can just do it i think anybody can do it so i think that's just a huge thing but i think yeah you could but it's you got to develop the mentality to say that i'm I'm gonna stick with yeah yeah i don't think entrepreneurship is for everybody at all yeah like i just like there's no way i could think that because there's so much that going to it and you know people just look at the glory of it but you know yeah they're not really knowing like 
the ins and outs. And, all and then the it's hours. trendy now. You know what I'm saying? It's trendy to be like, I'm a boss. I'm actually, um, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur. So whatever looks good. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. with that being said, then um, going back, going back to um, your history. So you're working at this, you're working at um, TBS. You're like, I'm moving back to Houston. I'm about to get this job mm-hmm. or whatever, right? Um, what yeah. was it like when you were first starting? Like, what was your mindset going into it? Was it rough? Was it something like you had to overcome? Was it a lot of failures? Like, what was it like getting started? Getting started in the industry? Well, no, getting started when you were starting your own business, when you moved back after. Oh, man. Honestly, it was great. Yeah. Like, it was great. When That's I good first started, I mean, it was just crazy because the thing about it is, I've, I've, I've like, it's so crazy. I think I've always been kind of like speaking and manifesting that. I've always wanted to be a manager in the entertainment industry. Because if I look at personal statements I may have wrote for whatever, or if I look at, you know, anything that I've wrote that's talking about like my goals or anything, I'll find stuff from like 2010, 2012. And I'm clearly stating like, this is what I want to do. So I think I really manifested it um, into my life to where like in 2015, when I started grad school, I started doing it for free. I just wanted to practice. Like I was just doing it for free for everybody. And it was cool. And then in 2018, like I said, being in L.A. just like inspired me. And when I started, I had nine clients. That's good. And it was overwhelming because all my clients were like in Texas and I was in L.A. And with the time difference and, you know, just not being able to interact in person and all of that. um, It was just like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like I had crazy support like from the start and I was able to build up, you know, my reputation with it because I did so much free stuff. Yeah. And then like, you know, I went to school, people seen that I went to school and I was like in my MBA, but I think a lot of my credibility came from the free work that I did for people. Yeah. So once it was time for me to start my business, I'm doing free work for like three years. Yeah. Once I started my business, it was all support from the start. And that's what made me have me back to Houston. Yeah. Um, when I moved back to Houston, my artist, Within that month, she opened up for two chains, yellow mm. easy baby. So it was, it was like really a great start, and I don't regret it at all. Yeah, <laughs> I don't regret it at all. Yeah. yeah. Oh well. So let me ask this because there's a couple things that you said that I definitely want to talk about. Um, but one okay. thing you just said was um doing work for free, right? It's yeah. Like a lot of people get in and they feel like they're bigger than they are, so they'll be like, "I ain't doing no free work." But man, I did so much free stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't understand that. Like. Mm-hmm. I did free work for so long and I mean I don't regret it at all I'm so happy I did and it made me you know practice a lot and like get better at what I do but I don't understand like why people would yeah. want to anything I take experience over anything yeah. me, I'm a person. like if I can Message. get a great experience for it yeah <laughs> I'll take experience over anything like pay is nothing yeah. like I'm a learner I'm a forever learner so like I'll take experience over anything. Yeah, that's yeah. Everybody, you know, this is weird because it's all mindset. Everybody don't think like that though. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm saying that's why we do shows like this, right? To tell people like, <laughs> hey, it's, it's a lot of other people saying this type of stuff, right? Yeah. I guess another thing, what I know is remarkable about you though is I think that because I, I watched some of the video that you put up, right? Mm-hmm. And the video you were talking about how you were broke, um, how how broke you were, <laughs> which I resonate with stuff like that. Um, yeah. I, 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 I fuck with people who like really. Like you really do it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're real entrepreneur. There's some people who, like I said, they just, um, they sold one shirt online and they like, I'm an entrepreneur, right? But you really do yeah. it. But um, going into going into that, like just resonating with that, um, I think that's remarkable that you've also been able to stay like humble, right? Like, I feel like- That's everything to me. Like, you, like, you know what I'm saying? I, even just talking to you now, I get that sense of like, you know, you're just a very honest person about like where you come from, your background, even some of the stuff you wrote on there. Like, cause I come from a marketing background, mm-hmm. but, you know, people like to embellish, but you were like, you know, I've got, yes. I've had hundreds of clients where somebody would have had, I've worked with hundreds of thousands of clients. Like, yes, yeah. I'm not that type of marketer yeah. at all. It's so crazy because that's like one of the, one of the YouTube videos I plan on doing next. Yeah. Like just okay, being honest. Sure. Just like, you know how there's those marketers who just be like, oh, um, how to make a thousand, you know, a thousand dollars in a month, like mm-hmm. just starting off, like just crazy stuff, you know? And I think with marketing, a lot of words attract sales, yeah. but it's like, be realistic. Like, you know, 
like me, I'm all about process. With marketing, I definitely think it's a process. I don't think it's nothing like a get quick rich mm-hmm. thing. Like I don't think it's anything like that. I think marketing is a lot of trial and error. Um, finding out what works for you, you know, it takes some time. You got to study your competition. Like there's a lot that go into it. There's yeah. is nothing that's just like this overnight thing yeah. that some marketers, you know, yeah. still along to try to make it seem like. So. Yeah, definitely. So let me ask you something. You said something about manifesting. You mm-hmm. manifested this way. Are you like a you a heavy believer in the law of attraction? Yeah, I mean, I never read the book or anything or anything like that. But I mean, yeah, I guess like naturally I am. Yeah. Because the biggest thing is, like I say, when I hear people manifesting, I always think of goals, right? Having a clear vision. How, how important do you think having a clear vision is into in becoming successful, just in anything? It's very important. It's very important. I think, like, like I mean, manifestation is very important. It's so crazy because I enjoy it so much and I've seen the power of it so much that every time something pops in my head, I just write it down. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I can just go, like, because clearly, you know, once I put it out in the world, I write it down and then... It's crazy, you know, going back to your notes and seeing it come to life. Yeah. Um, Why do you think some people are not, don't set goals though? I, because I, I've had friends before and they're like, I just don't set goals. Like, what do you think that is? I don't know. It's, cra- it's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't, I don't know. Because I can't imagine living like that. Lazy. Like, I mean, it's crazy. I don't know. Some people, I mean, if you don't have goals, then like, what are you doing? Like, what's your purpose? Or like, you know, I feel like everybody has a purpose and finding that purpose can be hard like it can be hard finding your purpose but everybody has one so if you don't have any goals like even if they're small they don't have to be huge like oh i want to own this small time like it could be simple like i want to base on mars yeah like it could be something simple but it's like i feel like without goals there's no like direction in your life like you just like going with the flow so what about you then what is you, what do you think your direction is? Is it is it motivated by legacy? Is it to change the world? Is it to help people? Um, my main motivation, I think, is just like generational crisis, like breaking that completely. Mm-hmm. And then, um, of course, it's always helping people. The, one of the main reasons why I started my business is because I knew that I knew a lot of talented people. And like, I just wanted to be like the plug. I just wanted to like connect this person with this person so yeah. they can, you know, blow up or whatever place maybe I've always been very invested into like the business aspect of everything. I've never wanted to be like the talent yeah. or the person. I just wanted to like be the plug connecting people to like create magic. So Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So another interesting thing that I found out about you, right? Like <laughs> yeah. I know it's interviewer mode. But another interesting thing I found out oh, is, is that like that, that you are a devastating diva of <laughs> DST. Yeah. And the reason I, that's interesting hey. to me because I am a member of Omega Sci Fi. So we are, <laughs> yeah, so we are, you are my sorrow. But uh, yeah, I thought that was interesting. But um, I guess switching to something more personal, and I always ask people this because I think it's important, right? Like I had one guy on the show, he was about to get married and asked him about being married or whatever, right? What about relationships or whatever? How do you manage relationships when it comes to being an entrepreneur? Because I will say this, just being honest, a lot of women entrepreneurs, I feel like they, sh- they have, um, their difficulties, I'll say, because you know they're just so driven and stuff like that. So, yeah. what's that experience been like for you? Yeah, <laughs> it's been an experience. Um, I feel like it's definitely one on the more difficult side. Um, I'm very, you know, I mean, I have a lot of guy friends who I ask them, like I ask them, and they like basically say like I can be intimidating because I have all this going on, and somebody may not be able to match that, and that's crazy to me. But I mean. Okay, if that's what it is, then that's just what it is. But I don't, I'm not really like focused on dating or like being in a relationship because I know that there's certain things that I want to do or just probably just be like in this certain space where I'm able to really give like I want to give in a relationship. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, um, I think at a certain point to give holy, you gotta be a little bit selfish in the beginning, right? It's almost yes. like you're, you're holding, very in my selfish stage, right? Yeah, and you're, you're like holding out for something different. But also, I guess I would say, um, yeah, that may be even romantic relationships. But I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs, and I'll be honest with you, myself included, uh, you have let relation not like romantic relationships, but like personal relationships, reaching out mm-hmm. to friends, family. So, what do you think? Like, how do you manage like your friends and family? Is that something you struggle with, um, or is that something you kind of like? Oh yeah, I got that down. 
Um, my family is really supportive. So good in that area. As far as my friends, I have really great friends. Um, they understand, and I have entrepreneurial friends as well. So um, everybody, I mean, they understand. I definitely have my moments where I go in my A, and I don't feel like talking to anybody, and I'm just like in my mode, like you know, going hard. But for the most part, they understand, and it's just no hard feelings or anything like that. So, um, yeah, as far as, like, personal relationships, it's cool. I think I have a great circle, and I'm just blessed to have a great circle behind me where I just have that support, and I don't have to deal with that, like, you know, yeah. extra drama or, oh, I didn't hear from you in five days. So whatever. you're definitely not a where your ass was at person. Mm-mm. Let me ask you something. Oh, okay, so switching gears again. This whole situation, we know what's going on right now, right? Go crazy situation. A lot of people have, they've just had a hard time with this, right? Yeah. Um, and I've always tell people it's just like one of those things, like it's hard for people to adapt, right? How, what about you? How have you adapted to this situation? Just, this is historic. Yeah. We've never seen anything like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think with me that I was just saying, it's just like being more personable, really showing your personality. Um, putting it out there. You know, a lot of the times I hid behind the camera and that was so crazy to me because I'm not a shy person at all. Yeah. But I never was on my stories talking to people. I wasn't posting videos or anything like that. I was just, this is what I'm doing. Here it is. But I wasn't really, you know, and it, I think I was just so stuck in like my friends know me. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't realizing that like, no, there's people that follow me that like really need to know me. They can't just go by my photos. Like there's no liveliness behind that. Mm -hmm. So I've definitely pivoted in going more towards video marketing and video content. Um, Just trying to um, just really show my personality and be transparent and share my background. Because like I said, I feel like it's hard for people that don't know you to buy from you. Yeah. If they have, you know, if they don't know anything about you, where you come from, your why or your purpose. Yeah. Like if there's no story behind it, then no, it's just hard to sell things. So Yeah. That's what it comes down to building a great brand, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think those elements are though? For you at least. What are those elements to build building a great brand? I think credibility is definitely important. Um, like I said, I did a lot of free stuff for for years. So I was able to like build up my credibility, show the work that I'm able to do. I'm I like I think a lot of it is showing what you can do, showing your reviews. Like if somebody like what you do, like posting that, like really making yourself credible out here because there's a lot of people that do what we do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's all about finding that competitive advantage and you know. How do you stand apart? What are you offering that your competitor isn't? So yeah, let me so you, so you so you're a member of um, Forbes the culture, right? Could you talk a little yes. bit more about what Forbes the culture is? Because I was interested to learn more about that. Yeah, what's so crazy? Yeah, I've I've only been a member for what like two months at this point, but I, I mean that's huge. Applied, Don't sleep on it. I literally had applied in October though. Like yeah. it took them seven months to get back to me. Mm-hmm. That was so crazy. But Forbes the Culture was basically in a group formed at the Forbes 30 Under 30 Summit for diverse leaders. Okay. So people that are doing things in their communities and being a leader, it's just a simple application that you fill out and they review it and yeah. it seems fit. But I mean, that's a big thing though, right? Like, I feel like, because um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. like I said, even when you said you did the HBCU in LA, right? Um, mm-hmm. You were like one of nine chosen of 750 applicants, right? So, yes, so, so my big thing is like, that's why I say it's that humbleness again. And, and I love that humbleness because like I say, it's like when I was, I was, I was just chosen out of 750. <laughs> you know, that's nothing. You just put your application in, right? But like, but yeah. like, what is it though? Like, what is it? What is it you're presenting to the people that you're like, that makes them say, okay, this is something that I want to work with. Because I'm, I'm guessing that's very important even talking with your clients because yeah. You could have a rapper or you could have somebody mm-hmm. who's an asshole and people don't want to hire them just because they're hard to work with. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So is that something that you're big on is like how you present yourself even yeah. to the people you work with? No, I'm big. Like the thing about me is that you got to realize a lot of people want me. I think people want me to manage them all the time, but there's levels to it. There's a process behind it. Like I have to be a fan, you know, of what you have going on. And then like, 
I like people, you know, who have a good name for themselves. I can't deal with the people who, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's negative energy around you. Like, all of that is important to me. Like, I need to have good energy around me. I need to have hard work. All of my clients are very hard working. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's levels to it. I'm not just out here doing it because, oh, you need a manager, you need a manager, and I have 20 clients. And yeah. These people are uh, managed by me. Yeah. I have four solid clients mm-hmm. management-wise that I'm good. Like, um, you know, they're solid, and it's a process of how they, I would rather have four than have, like, 20 that are just, like... Just so you have, say you have, have them. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just say, like, oh, I have this whole agency, and I have, like, 20 people. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So, I think like, so you've built it up the right way. I've told people this all the time. And um, you see if you, you agree with this. Um, I told people all this time that it's more about attraction versus pursuit, right? And people always ask yeah. what you mean by that. It's like you put out a message and you try to attract the right people versus just going out trying to grab every person because you're just going to grab low quality people. Do you find that yeah. to be true? Because that sounds like how you built your agency, right? You, yeah. you just got the type of people that connected with you. It was so crazy. Like, I'm very spiritual as well. Mm-hmm. So another thing about my clients is that, like, they've been in my life for a while. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy that, like, that's just how the world, you know, yeah. like, laid out. It goes back to when I said I knew a lot of talented people. Yeah. So I, that was a fact that I knew. Like, one of my clients that I have who's an influencer, mm-hmm. I've been telling him to tap into that space since 2011. Yeah. And he started in 2020. And getting all these brand stuff like that. Like, it's just, it's always been there. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, you know, bringing it all together. Like, it's always been around me. That's just how I feel. And it was just finally, like, bringing it all together. But yeah, I definitely do it the right way. I can't just accept anybody. Um, when people hit me up for management, it's a whole process behind it. Um, I look deep into it. Like I said, I have to make sure that I like what's going on because it's easier for me to promote. Mm-hmm. If, I like it. if I don't like it, like, you know. In the saging, you in the saging at all? In my way. Into saging? Any stuff like that? Oh, I mean, in my head I am, but I don't have a sage stick. Like, I want one, and, like, I get it, and, like, I'm, like I get the yeah. process of behind it, but I don't even have a sage stick. But I would want a sage stick. I do want one. Yeah. I was wondering, because when people say they're spiritual. But I also go to this. I know, I I know um, you said that faith has played a heavy role in your life, right? Mm-hmm. How is your faith um, applied to you building a business? Are you going out on your own? Are you... Being somebody who can be the person who is the oldest of five and in, in, in carving a path for your family, how has that played a role in that? Oh, it's everything because with that faith, you know, it comes with a certain level of, of confidence. And I have a lot of confidence in myself. Like, I preach nobody can believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Like, I literally see people that do stuff like me and like I, I don't think they do it better than me. Like I think like I'm really like good at what I do. Yeah. But I'm saying like Ain't that's wrong with it. That I feel and it's not even hockey or anything like that. Like like you said, like I can be humble. Like I'm a very humble person. But sometimes you gotta let I know. know like my worth and like what I can do too. So sometimes they just gotta know. That's it. Sometimes yeah, you just gotta I let mean, them know. I think it's everything because it's been a lot of times where I could have gave up and quit, you know what I'm saying? But I've always looked at the bigger picture. Yeah. Like, can't let the little things, you know? Because I, I like me being spiritual, I don't feel like God put you through anything that you can't handle. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm going through it, like, I can really, like, handle it and, like, get through it. So, and it all goes back to mindset, too. Yeah, that mindset. Like that, and they run with it, and, okay, you know, look, it get better. And some people be like, let it tear them down and tear them apart, so. Yeah. And I feel like, because I always tell people, I think it's a mixture of mindset and skill set, to be honest with you, yeah. right? Like, mm-hmm. I think um, so we, so we, we, as people trying to learn business, and I, and I feel like I found this, when somebody tells you like, hey, you know, you got to have the right mindset, you just like, what's, all right, that's cool, but what's the, what's the trick? What's the thing you do, yeah. right? Like, people are always like, all right, what's the tactic, right? Like, how do you do yeah. this? And I think that's what people are looking for. And the reason I did this show is because the stuff you're talking about, right? That's what I want people to hear from so many different people's perspective, right? That all these people have different skills, but they're all talking about the same type of stuff, right? They're talking about how you think about the world, how you process the world. In the beginning of this interview, you said that I don't know what made me look at a situation that's negative and say, okay, I'm about to get going. Yeah. Versus a person who's like, oh, no, nah, that's it. It's a failure. So do you think, do you think it's fear? Because a lot of us get acquainted with fear as entrepreneurs. 
What do you think? Yeah. Like, you think it's just fear or like, how do you deal with it? It's just fear, but I mean, I have fear too. But it's like, I told, like, I was talking to somebody and I was telling them, I was like, it's crazy, you wouldn't even believe. I was like, before I record a YouTube video, it literally takes me an hour before I press start because I'm so nervous. Like, yeah. to just like start talking to people, it's so, it's kind of weird to me. So it's just like, I'm just so nervous. And it's like, but at the end of the day, I'm like, it's just something clicking me. And I'm just like, just, just do it. Like, just go. And it's so simple as that to me. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, to me, it's just like, people ask me all the time, like, well, how do you get started? Like, how do you do it? And I'm like, I literally just start. Like, if I'm in my head and I'm like, okay, I want to do an ebook. Then the next thing I'm doing is writing down the steps yeah. that it takes for me to yeah. do the ebook. Action like, taker. it's as simple as that. Yeah. Like, you know, it's as simple as that. Like, if something pop in my head, like, ooh, I need to do an ebook. Yeah. Okay. Do, 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 do. What topics could I do? Okay. Do, do. When do I want to put, like, and then I, you know, you just go into it. There's no other way around it. You literally, only way to start is to start. Yeah. Like, you just really have to go and I took it all the time. It don't even have to be 80% together yeah. because, like, I a lot of with marketing is trial and error, but it needs to be the thought and the idea is all you need. The action. So that's going to lead to the next steps, to the actions that's going to take, you know, to make it come to life. So, yeah. It's really as simple as that to me. Yeah, I think a lot of people, um, I think they overthink it, right? Like the action is what's yeah. important. The action, yeah. is, right? And um, I, like you said there, like you said there, or whatever, right? You just think and you think and you do. But do you think that it's because people are judging themselves too much? Because I sometimes think we're judging each other. We're judging ourselves too harshly. Like, say you're getting on YouTube, you're about to speak. Mm -hmm. And you go look at somebody who's been on YouTube for 10 years. Like, of course, they're yeah. good at speaking on YouTube. Do you think we're just looking at somebody else's success, somebody else's highlight reel, somebody else's end product, and we're saying that's what we should be right now and not focusing okay. more on just the process to get there? I think there's a lot of comparison there's definitely a comparison game but like i said that's where it comes with finding your competitive advantage and mm -hmm. figuring out what your competitor is not doing and incorporating that into your brand and the things that you do so you're fearful but there's still something out there that your audience is missing and you just need to find out what that is by studying your competition that's gems right there y'all that's <laughs> gems right there don't miss that yeah no definitely definitely um yeah like i said i i think that's all all great or whatever right I guess um another part I would like to talk to you about, because like I said, I, I could talk to you all day, is one thing I like to do as a segment, I call it the massive action mindset, right? And uh, basically what it is, is you've already discussed a lot of stuff that's that type of mindset, right? But I definitely want to talk about what is one mindset that you would tell anybody? If somebody's watching, I'm starting from scratch right now. Don, I'm starting from scratch, all right? Consult me right now. I'm starting from scratch. Life is hard. Nobody's believing in me. What's the first thing I need to do? Believe it, like know that you can do this and believe in yourself. That's the first thing. And then um, it's just really tailoring your mindset to like, I really feel like once you develop that mindset that you can do, the how to do it just naturally starts to develop. Like if you tell yourself like, oh, I want to do this because you know that's a goal that you want to reach. You may find yourself naturally doing research. You may find yourself naturally like falling into that path. So it's really just getting into that mindset of really believing that you can do it. And um, sometimes it's hard to really figure out what you want to do. So what I tell people all the time is write down three things that you're passionate about. It could be random, like literally family, friends, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then figure out, okay, well, how can you make those people like easier? But like you could break it down like that and you could really kind of find your purpose in that way. So um, those are some tips for sure that I would say. Um, but it's all about mindset, definitely. I'm a very strong believer of that. So if you if you constantly go don't complain and talk about how people don't support you and like believe in you, then it's just never like, you know, it's never gonna switch. Like you don't Yes, yes, yes. You said a mouthful there. It's just like I'm saying victim mindset. I told somebody one time, if my car gets broken into, um, I, I'll still be like, shouldn't have parked there, right? And that's, yeah. that's a big extreme, but I'm saying I feel like that's the type of personal responsibility you got to take when you're an entrepreneur, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're, because you're going to be responsible for other people, right? You're going to be responsible for employees and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think that's huge or whatever, right? One thing I do want to talk to, of course, towards the end of this is um, about the, about the uh, management company. Right. 
I want to talk about what you, what's what's next. What's what's in store? What can we see moving forward? Because a big part of me is while people are here, I want to plug them and make sure they that people can hear about them. So this is going to yeah. be going out to a lot of platforms. So what's next? What's next? What can we see from you? So what's next? Um, right now, like I'm just really trying to make my clients as successful in this COVID nineteen digitally as crazy as possible um and it's been working out really well um my artist is dropping a new song mm-hmm. um what's it called the, it's called sobered up it's really oh, good yeah, I'll go check out sobered up and um my client the lip gloss line is dropping a whole new line this week so that's exciting um uh, my influencer guy he's they be getting new deals every month. So be on the lookout for that. And I just find um, she's like, she's like really into like health and wellness. And she's like a therapist counselor. And she has like um, this self care, like podcast and all this stuff like that. So excited. Her podcast drops June 10th. Oh, that's exciting. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I sell shirts, the CEO shirts. The CEO, right? With you, yes, get a shirt. I got yeah. a shirt, hoodies, long sleeves. Matter of fact, make sure you send me a link. Make sure you send me a link to that because I'll put that in the description. Because you know, this goes out on uh, all the podcasting platforms, but I'm also oh. gonna put this up on YouTube. So yes. I'll make sure I put the link down there so y'all can go get a BCO shirt. Yes, please get a BCO shirt. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Really just going through the motions and, like I said, just trying to be as effective in COVID because I can't have events like I want to. I typically have an event every quarter. But it's fine. So Well let me know let me know after COVID. Let me know when the next one is. So another with that being said, and like I say, um and this is one thing because it just I just thought about it just came to my head right before uh we get towards the end here is how do you feel about collaboration? I always tell people like I think a lot of people um I think now like in Houston a lot of people are starting to collaborate. What about you? What's your takes on collaboration? Do you think it's important? Do you feel like it's something that you like to do? I love collaborating and I think it's super important. Um, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to collaborate. Um, I think it's very, like, it's, there's definitely power in numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like I said, you just introduced me to a whole new audience. You know, I don't really know who your audience is. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with you and I posted, you just open it up to my world too. Mm-hmm. Collaboration is very powerful and it's something I'm a very strong advocate for and I'm always down to do it. Um, always. It's very important. And um, I think it's something that Houston could be better at. Yeah. For sure. We may be like getting there. Yeah. But it could be it could still be better. It could still be better. For sure. So, so I'm gonna tell you something. Like I said, you'll understand this. I was talking to one of my frat brothers, right? Mm-hmm. And um you know, he was complaining about something. He was like, yeah, man, why don't they have this? Or why don't they have these events? Why don't they have this? And like I said, and this is not no shame to self-plug because you ever said something to, and it was a lesson to yourself as you said it? Like, you oh, like, yeah. like it's almost like you just came to realization like, oh, that's crazy. So he was saying all that. And I just said, because we haven't created it, right? And he just was sitting there like frozen for a second. I thought to myself, it's like, I believe what we're doing right now on this show, that's that's how you get there, right? Like, exactly. it's up to the people who are entrepreneurs. It's up to the people who are in the same space to stop looking at each other as competition, right? Like, I think everybody is, like, I think people are just, like, worried about themselves and, like, yeah. I want to be, like, the person. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, I want to be me instead of just, like, it's too much money out here. You can't have all the clients. Yeah. Well, you know I think... I can't have all the clients. And I think either. abundance, right? Like, it's abundance versus scarcity mindset. I had this long conversation with uh, one of my friends. I said, he was like, man, you know, why some of the, some people don't send clients your way? I said, I literally think it's just people are kind of like, I'm holding on to it all for me, right? I don't want to send yeah. it your way. But as yeah. I got around people who had a different mindset, what I noticed were they're constantly trying to throw people on you. Like you'll walk in and be like, oh, you do this? Hey, I got, hey, you could probably do that. Like, that's just how they are. And I think that's, yeah. that's how I always try to be. Like, yeah. me, I don't, I don't care. Like somebody could be doing the exact same thing as me. I'll, I'll, I'll collaborate with them and work with them because something you said that was huge, which was, I understand that my value, I understand my unique value. And I understand that's what the audience is coming to see. When somebody comes to your YouTube channel, when somebody comes to your page or when whatever it is, right. It's that story they've connected with. So that's something nobody can take from you. Exactly. They can't take that story from you. And I think that's huge. 
And that's why I feel like I like reaching out and talking with people like you because I can feel that passion. I can see that. I can see that drive mm-hmm. in you. And that's why I create the Action Taker Show. Because yeah. my whole point is, hey, I want to collaborate and I want to talk with other entrepreneurs. What's the best way to do that? Hey, I got a show. Come on this show. Let's talk yeah. about some entrepreneurship. It can be as simple as that. Like, seriously, as simple as that. So I'm very big on that. Um, always down for it. If it makes sense, let's do it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we can do it. Okay, so um, right now at the end of the show, I like to um, I like to give people a um, chance to well, anything that you got going on that you want to talk about. Is there any projects or anything you want to tell people about coming up so they can know about you? Besides what I said earlier about like all my artists, like check all of them out. Uh, Tyra, she's an R and B singer at the Tyra Anderson. Uh, Wyrie, he is a uh, a motivational skincare lifestyle influencer. His Instagram name is underscore DW06. Mm-hmm. Um, XO by Danny Nicole. That's the lip gloss line. It's vegan free, gluten free. Yeah. Um, very great lip gloss, very long lasting lip gloss and lip conditioners, anything for your lips. All lip stuff, all good stuff. And um, check out my new client's podcast on June 10th about all things self-care. Make sure to send me all those links. I'm going to put them in the yeah, description. Yeah, I'll make sure to send you all those links and my CEO shirts. Yeah, all that. Come yeah, on. I need to get you a CEO shirt. Give me one. Give me one, please. Because I yeah. definitely, because let me tell you something. I definitely will wear it on here because I'm telling you, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like, I've actually got, so I got these uh, massive action movement hoodies coming, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm telling people, I'm going to wear them on here. I'm going to wear them on here. I'm like, why not wear your own stuff, right? And yeah. then, so if you give me a CEO shirt, trust me, yeah. you turn on one of these podcasts, you're going to see it on You're going to see it on me. You're going to see it on me. I'm trying to give it to some real CEOs out here. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's a cool. Thanks for paying me. Thanks for paying me a compliment like that. <laughs> Thank you. Try to give it out to some real CEOs. Because the, way, cause the cause way you said it, I've been giving it to these fake CEOs. <laughs> oh, that's funny, though. No, but seriously, we're definitely going to get you a shirt. But yeah, besides that, more videos. Um, like I said, I'm definitely becoming a YouTube person. I definitely yeah. want to start showing my personality more and sharing my story more. And just things that I know, I know so much. I just don't really know if people want to hear or talk about, but I'm just about to They do. Like, they do. out there. Yeah. And call it a day. And uh yeah, so please be on the lookout for my YouTube video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, T D M G M T. Um all like in the description. Said, like, lifestyle stuff too, not yeah. just branding and marketing, but I don't want y'all to like tap into my lifestyle too. So Yeah. Show them what a what a real public relations specialist does. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're gonna use yeah. that. That's gonna be our theme. Just gonna say the word real before stuff. Like people who really <laughs> done it. Right. She, she's worked the big she's actually worked the big stations before. So that's why I say real, really done. It. Yeah. Um, so I guess um, the other thing is and I, I say this and this is just me saying this to you or whatever. Right. Hey, this is just the first one. I always tell people at the end. This is just the first one. You know, this is the interview style. But like when stuff comes up, I'd love to have you back on the show just to kind of give your opinions, your thoughts on it, especially stuff that's going on when it's whether it's the industry, the community, anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, so, hey, I, I appreciate you coming on the show. And the last thing before we get out of here, mm-hmm. tell them all your social media, where they can find you. And then, um, yeah, we'll wrap it up from there. Okay, cool. On Instagram, uh, you can follow me at Denisha underscore J. That's D-O-N-E-S-H-A underscore J. My business Instagram is T-D-M-G-M-T underscore. Um, Twitter, not important. Oh, I actually got that on here. <laughs> no, I mean... People can follow me on Twitter, but it's like yeah. Twitter is like my Twitter is not businessy at all. Oh, like, but that's letting people see your personality. Person. Yeah, it's people. straight raw me. So yeah. hey, if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's where everybody about to go. They like, yeah, let me go see the raw her. Let me see. <laughs> it's D O N E S H A A A underscore. I'm not. A, I don't get on Snapchat anymore. Yeah. Snapchat hey, still exists. Snapchat. Snapchat. Wow. They still exist. Um, what else matters? Oh, LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. My name is Denisha Winters on LinkedIn. Um, is that all of them? Uh, that's all. The, that sounds like all the important ones. Instagram. Okay. <laughs> Unless you want to give people your Facebook. Do you have a Facebook fan I page? Did. Huh? You have a Facebook fan page? Not a Facebook fan page. I have a Facebook business page. Not a oh, my bad. My bad. 
Do I need a fan page? You well, no, it's the same thing. It's, like, it's, fans? No, it's the same thing, though, right? Like, <laughs> but the way you said it, like, no, nah, I ain't. I don't know what little little, little stuff no, you got going. Fans, but yeah, I have this page. It's yeah. the non management. I was like, I don't know what little stuff you got going on. But I got a, a real page. I got a real page over here. Okay. Yeah. So I'm really trying to build up my YouTube channel, so. Yeah, so go send all the traffic over there. And like I say, <laughs> the link will be in, in the description. All that will be in the description. Make sure you send it over to me so I can put all that in the description. Okay. But like I say, hey, once again, hey, what, thank everybody for coming to Action Takers. Y'all know I'm Princeton Hicks on everything. P-R-I-N-S-T-O-N-H-I-C-K-S. And uh, I, I, I was it's honored talking to you today because I think you just display once again why people who just take action, right? It's not about everything you know. It ain't about how. It's about, all right. Here's the goal. This is yeah. where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Let's take some action. Be intentional. And I'm grateful to have you on the show. I want to send some blessings your way. And um, let's do this again sometime. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you for having me. I'm glad we crossed paths, however we crossed paths. And yeah, that you like really, you know, took the time to really, you know, research and really dig into what I do. Um, that that means a lot to me. That's really great. Yeah. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right, y'all. We will see y'all next time. Thanks.